thank you so much for coming on the show. It's great to finally meet you because this is how we meet each other nowadays through Zoom. So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and your organization and what you're passionate about? Yeah. Do we want to talk about our sort of the background on myself, like everything from the get-go or just- Yeah, whatever you want to talk about, man. I want to okay. hear about your story. So I'll give a quick intro myself. You know, my name is Justin Chi. I run uh, Cold Email Hackers. We do- I love that generation. name, by the way. I love that yeah. name. <laughs> we talked about this briefly, but <laughs> some people hate it. Some people love it, but um, I like it. So that's the name. Um, <laughs> if you don't like it, that's cool. But yeah, some background on myself. So I have run another business before, um, which failed- pretty horribly. We could talk about that briefly. Um, that kind of leads. You're not a startup course. founder. You're not a startup founder. If you have it, if you don't have at least one business that has failed miserably, miserable failure is <laughs> like, terrible. Like six months. I was, we're not, we're not going to talk about that. Six months, uh, <laughs> pretty dark six months after that failed. But, um, yeah, that's, that's kind of the story, right? So I kind of how we started this company, you know, I had my first business failure. Um, this was probably four or five years ago. I failed completely. We were, it, it was, uh, it was a reselling business. So what we would do in that case, I'm not going to get too deep into it, but Ethereum mining was a thing back then. I don't think Ethereum mm -hmm. like is mined anymore in that fashion. It's like done through staking or whatever, but they used to mine it through like graphics cards. And what we would do is we would just drive around LA, you know, Southwest of us. And we would just buy up these graphics cards from failed miners and just flip them on eBay. There's a shortage, nice. you know, PC gamers needed them. How I ultimately failed, um, really stupid. I was very young. I put all my money into one batch turned out really bad. And then we just lost all our money. Oh no, that sucks. That That's sucks. how that happened. So, right. So, so yeah. do, is it just, is it just that one bad decision or what did that, would the market change too at the same time? Market changed. And frankly, it was a series of bad decisions. That's, that's what sealed. That's what sealed the deal. Right. But mm -hmm. then I'd split with my partner a few months before, and then just a number of things just ultimately led. I was inexperienced, right? Like I hadn't really run a proper business before. So it just, Inexperienced, but a lot of lessons learned that kind of led me to start this. You know, I did yeah. try starting a couple of ventures after here and there. Um, those didn't really go anywhere. I wouldn't even say it was failed, it just kind of didn't really take off. And that led me to realize I had to sharpen my sales skills, right? So I got right. in tech sales. I was, you know, you're as an entrepreneur, like you don't want to admit defeat, but like I just kind of admitted defeat. <laughs> got a job in tech sales, did that for two years, and we just I just blew out of the water. Um but that's a, a that's hard. a really good uh, proving ground. 100%. I didn't realize at the time, but it was right. You know, I dropped out of college, like no degree. I was like, you know what? I'm just see if this works. Right. So yeah, did tech sales for a bit. Um, cold calling, cold emailing. That's kind of what led into this. Um, I mm -hmm. worked at a startup, number one sales rep, number one SDR there, you know, cold call, nice. whatever. And then I went to zoom info, zoom info, big brand name. And that's where I kind of figured out how to send emails. Um, sending a lot of cold emails, number one there out of like three or 400 people, uh, 300 or 400 reps. And then pretty much what happened was, you know, I figured out how to use email. I was sending cold emails to a lot of these like sales and marketing leaders because that was our main target. And this is how I got my first customers. They just reached back out to me and they were like, hey, let's let's talk. Like we'd like you to send emails for us. Got my first three customers as a side hustle for nice. six months. <laughs> and so you were pitching yeah. Zoom info, which is basically like uh, marketing information, right? Exactly. Like, okay, cool. Yeah, and they were just like, oh, we like how you write emails. It's kind of funny. They would call me nice. back, right? So that's what happened. <laughs> and then... Again, more feel. How did you how did you figure out how to write emails? Like, is it because because of your sales experience, or what, what is it that pushed that that well, got you to that skill level? A lot of people send emails, right? And a lot of people yeah. fail at sending emails. Oh yeah, I, mean, I cold called a lot. Like, I didn't even cold call. Tell us about a year into my sales experience. I didn't sorry, didn't even cold email until I got some, you know, one year or so in. I mean, I was cold emailing for the other business, like just typing emails one by one. Sure. But um, that's when I kind of figured out you just send emails at scale and just kind of blast emails out. And this was when it was much easier. I'm sure you get a ton of spam now. It wasn't oh, yeah. like that then. But, um, but you know, yeah. the thing is, is that uh, if it would, it didn't work, we wouldn't get it anymore. Exactly. It must work. It works. It's right? getting harder, but it still works. And that's, that's a whole business, right? So yep. I think kind of how we figured it out was... Um, I made a lot of cold calls, kind of realized people don't, you're reaching out to them cold, right? Like I'm interrupting their day. They don't want to sit there and read a ton of stuff. Just get straight to the point. Yeah. Right? Can you so, actually sell anything with cold calls anymore? I mean, I, I, it's almost like, really? Really? Because I, I, I never pick up my anymore. phone. When I, if I don't recognize who it is, I yeah. never pick up my phone. I didn't realize that, that, that people still sold through cold calls. It works. Um, I would say I haven't cold called in probably a year or so, but and when I first started my business, like, you know, maybe about a year and whatever, we were still cold calling to get business, but um, it still works. It's just very tedious. It's definitely not mm. as easy as it used to be, as with cold right. email, as with anything. Right. right? So yeah, kind of how we figured out cold email um, versus other people. Made a lot of cold calls. Nobody wants to hear what you have to say, so you have to be quick. That was the general framework. But then 
kind of going back in this theme of like failing and learning is that first three customers, we just bombed it, frankly. Like we just didn't do very good. <laughs> so what happened was I was working for ZoomInfo. It's a big brand name. And these, these customers, they were startups, like really small companies, um, not much brand presence. And ZoomInfo, you get away with a lot more. I can just say, oh, I'm emailing you from ZoomInfo. Do you want to meet? Like, it's not that simple, but you get what I'm saying. So for six months, we kind of had to figure out, okay, how do we get out of spam, right? Zoom info, they've been around for a while. We send emails, don't go to spam. I don't know if they're going to spam now. It's gotten stricter, right? But back then, startups, I said, a new domain, we're going to spam. So how to figure out how to get a spam. Yeah, but this is not long that long ago. Not like, that long ago. a couple ago. years ago. Yeah. And it's gotten, it's just gotten way harder in two years, right? Like mm. AI is getting spam filters. That's my guess. It's just gotten way harder. But um. Second thing was messaging. And this is before AI got really popular, but we just kind of figured out, okay, we have to figure out why people buy your software in the first place, right? Like what's, let's look at your existing customers. Let's look at the reasons they bought. What industries are they in? Do we, they have any tech you integrate with, et cetera. And we would just spend a lot of time building these really small campaigns, mm. like what you would call unscalable, right? Doing things that aren't scalable. We do things that aren't scalable. And then that's how we started getting results for these startups. And then towards the end of the year, you know, 2022, 2023, this is when we started, um, this is when AI started blowing up. And this is about the time I started, I went full-time on this. It's no longer a side hustle. Right. Um, we figured out qu pretty quickly, okay, we, we've been running all these small little campaigns. It takes a lot of time for us to write these up. We know what works. It's just not scalable. Mm. AI came along and now we can just load a huge list of people and come up with these personalizations and these observations without having to sit there. So that's kind of- Wow, how into our business. fantastic. How, so, how, yeah. how, how, how do you do that? I mean, you don't know anything about these people, right? You know you know very yeah. little about them. I mean, how, yeah. how how do you figure it out? Yeah, it's it's not too, well, I would say as from my perspective, it's not too complex, right? But there's tools like Clay. It's kind of like a fancy air table. And the most basic way, as far as how we do this, we scrape the company description. Mm -hmm. And then we use AI to kind of, we have a template for the line. So let me back this up. We test our, we still test our processes manually. Like in the beginning, we're still testing these campaigns manually, but we figure out what works manually. And within these campaigns, there's always some variations, right? If I'm selling to marketing agencies versus I'm selling to, I don't know, um, like FinTech or something, there's always some variation in the personalization, even though the right. general thing I'm trying to sell you on is the same. There's always, you know, this, this, let's say I'm selling software. The software still sells, solves the same problem, but the pain, the specific pain you're trying to solve is different. Right. So we run these campaigns, whatever. We figure out this kind of line works. We scrape the company description. Then we tell GPT, basically, we have a format, we have a template, whatever. Write, scan the company description, write us a message that, write us a, you know, a sentence that fits in this general line. Like one example might be like for myself, when I'm running campaigns, I, this, is, this is a lesson we learned. I might be selling to marketing agencies, right? Like within marketing agencies, there's like SEO agencies, web design agencies. And I'll write a line that says, hey, we can help you find customers that need help with SEO or need help ranking higher on their search or customers that need a website redesign. And that resonates better than if I say, we can help you find companies that need a marketing agency. So we just take that same concept, right? Maybe we're going after VP of sales at any B2B company. I prove that hypothesis through that marketing agency example I gave you. Now I just pull a list of any VP of sales at a B2B company. I script the description and then I could write personal online. I might say something like GPT might come up with a line that says like, we can help you find heads of information technology that need a new data center or something like that. And right. I don't have to sit there and type that up. You know what I mean? So nice. Yeah. But you don't send the same message to everybody or the, so the tool sends different messages to everybody, or you use, just use AI to generate the, the same template for everyone. The template, the framework is the same, but there's like one or two sentences here and there that we do personalize that are different for each client or each uh, prospect. So you have uh chat GPT go out or the AI go out mm -hmm. and figure out. So if I say company X, so let's say you're pitching to yeah. HubSpot, right? Yes. So it would actually go and look up Hub, HubSpot yes. and get some information on HubSpot and then mm -hmm. in, like insert a sentence about HubSpot in the email. Yeah. So it looks really personalized. Yeah. So like in the example I gave you, maybe it would say something like we can help you find heads of sales that need a new CRM. That's right. the kind of output it would give. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And then it would, and, but that would be everybody at HubSpot would get that, a very similar message or are you just the, just the HubSpot be, person? We're very targeted with how we send it. So let's, let's use the example HubSpot, right? We would maybe only go after like a VP of sales there or something. Right. And they would get the same message. Although we do have like slight variations. So this is not as related to AI as I know the topic is AI on this chat, but um, that's fine. Generally spam filters, they, they're not stupid. They see if you're saying the same message. So we have variations. So maybe like 
I'll have one variation that starts off like, Hey, I saw on LinkedIn, your X, Y, Z. The other one might be like, Hey, I saw on the HubSpot website that your X, Y, Z or whatever. There's just variations to make it seem a bit more personalized. And we do use AI to generate those variations as well. So, so how much does your personal sales experience feed into the kind of uh, email writing you're, you're doing today? A lot, right? Cause mm-hmm. I, I know there's a lot of companies now popping up doing what I'm doing now and they don't have this background. I do, I'm kind of bragging here, but they don't have the same background I do. And I feel like a lot of times like AI, don't get me wrong, allows us to scale these campaigns and, you know, be more relevant at scale. But if you don't understand at a basic level, what makes people tick, it doesn't really matter what you use. Like that's, that's the biggest thing. AI is, um, it's not the silver bullets, but it is, um, it accelerates what we're doing already. Uh, yeah. So 10 X is what you're doing, but it doesn't exactly. actually, it won't, it won't start. You have to give it the right seed, but if you go, cause if you don't give it the right seed, then it's going to exactly. go all over the place yeah. Yeah, and, and create all sorts of junk. Yeah. So you, it sounds like what you're saying is that it's really important for uh, an entrepreneur, startup founder, anybody who wants to build a business, they should spend some time in sales. They, they gotta so. get into sales. Yeah, yeah. I'm look, like I'm pretty introverted. Like, don't get me wrong. I, I'm you not- are. <laughs> I've, I've learned how you to don't not seem very there. introverted. <laughs> Naturally I am like maybe on pod, I began on podcasts. I, I first podcast I did were pretty terrible. Honestly, like I got, I got kind of nervous, right? Yeah, they so, are, they're <laughs> always terrible in the beginning. Trust me. Yeah. Yeah. I was kind of nervous, you know, but like they say, just kind of do it. Um, but yeah, I would say biggest difference in starting something like the past ventures I had, like I, I've tried, I've tried so many like stupid business ideas. And yeah, I got a huge list of them myself. So it's just so totally like, you look it. back and it's just so stupid. Like, what was I thinking? Right. But every single one of those, I feel like it could have worked if I had better sales skills. So, yeah, right. that's really important. Right. Right. So, and, and when it comes to sales skills, really just like jumping in the deep end is the way to do it. Like get, get so. a gig that forces you to do outbound calling or outbound emails or whatever. Yeah. And, and talk to customers all the time because it's sort of, it's, it's sort of bulletproofs you against that kind of stuff. Because if you don't do that, then. Yeah. You know, you feel like crap when. <laughs> yeah, rejection is rejected. something you have to learn. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely something you have to learn. But I, I, I've seen founders where they know they don't have any sales experience and they just jump in and start doing sales and they do fine. So, I guess it's not one size fits all. But for me, I definitely needed that sales experience, like working a sales job. So. Right. So when you were starting this company, and yeah. you you must have had like a single moment where you realized this is going to work. Like, yeah. w- when did that happen? I mean, how far <laughs> into? <laughs> so, there's two points like that, right? First point was. Let's be frank here. I'm not even going to sugarcoat it. So I was working at Zoom Info. We're sending emails, right? I was working two hours a day at most, like wow. an hour and a half, right? Because we were just sending emails. <laughs> I was just, I was sitting there. I was like, well. I what am so I going to do with the rest of the day? Yeah. I'm like, okay, you, you, can only, you can only play so many video games, right? You can only do so much stuff, whatever. So I was like, you know, I could just do this for a bunch of other companies. I'm like, why don't I start doing that? And that kind of happens. And I didn't really settle this as a business idea till I would say, again, at six months, right? When I just went full-time on this, I was like, wait, hold on. Cause you know, me, this is another thing as well. Like this, this kind of theme for me is like, people always talk about scalability and this, this is the thing I hate the most when people talk about scalability and they've never scaled a business. Um, mm-hmm. That's the thing, right? So yeah. people are always telling me, oh yeah, you know, I would find something more scalable. I was telling them about like the business I was doing there. Oh, I find something more scalable. But then I realized, I forgot who, I think it was Paul Graham or something, some, some startup, whatever. I saw it on a podcast. I keep saying this now, but it's like, do things that aren't scaled in the beginning and figure it out later. I was like, well, I'm making money from this now. Why don't I just, why don't I just focus on, why don't I figure a way to scale this? And you know, now yeah. that AI is a thing, well, I see a real path of scalability. So that's, yeah, you can scale things that are unscalable. You just have <laughs> so to be resourceful. That's a beautiful thing. <laughs> yeah. AI just kind of sped that up. I think even if AI didn't exist, I would still figure something out, of course. Right. So you're, you're, it's still, you're in an agency model, right? You're like, you're not at a point where you can just create some kind of SaaS and go here, go to it. Right. Yeah. I would say it's more of an agency model at this point. Um, but on the back end, things are pretty automated. Um, things are mostly automated. It's just, I don't feel comfortable running this as a SaaS quite yet. I wouldn't feel comfortable. Like, cause we still vet our clients pretty extensively before we take right. them on. Right. Cause offer is king at the end of the day. But, um, I think as we grow, that's, that is a thing that we're thinking about. It's maybe a year or two years down the line. Right. But it's still, I mean, the, the expertise that you've built, Mm -hmm. can it be codified in such a way that it could turn into a SaaS or is it, it, I think it sounds like it needs to continue to have that personalization that you're you're bringing to it. I mean, even if you think like two years ago, people were saying like this personalization at scale, whatever was not possible. And then AI came along and it is. So I don't want to definitively say it's not right. But as of now, I don't think it is, but who knows, maybe two, three years, it might be. Um, I'm not discounting that at all. 
Right. Yeah. So if you have any, if you had any advice to give to like a prospective startup founder, like an entrepreneur, probably somebody who's working just a wagey job right now and is looking to do something different or, or uh, augment what they're doing, what yeah. would you, what's your best piece of advice? I would say, stop trying to find that. Okay, like, don't get me wrong. I think all the greatest founders like that, at least that I've studied is they have some moonshot idea that nobody thought would work and they just ran with it. But then let's be frank here. If you're just trying to get out of working a wagey job, like focus on what your employer is paying you for, right? A lot of your listeners, I'm guessing probably work in tech or some sort of oh, yeah, yeah. field. Definitely. So it's like, what is your employer paying for? Someone else is probably willing to pay you for that same thing. So right. do that first. Like, don't get me wrong. I have I have another venture we're testing now. It's um, it's a payment processing for cannabis. Like it's long story mm -hmm. there, not AI related at all, but we're using our learnings from there. I feel like that's a more scalable model. That's sort of a side hustle. Like I'm just contributing the lead generation. So you're, but, it's almost like you, you took this, this is a side hustle that you turned into a real business. Now you, yeah. you're side hustling yourself. Yeah, see if that works, right? So it's just like, <laughs> yeah. Um, even if, even if it doesn't seem scalable, now just do something, get out of that rat race. And then you'll have more time to figure out. Cause when I started doing this full time, you know, you don't think it's a big toll, but working a job where you have a boss telling you what to do and don't get me wrong, clients are still telling me what to do to some extent, right? Oh but yeah. It's like, there's still... it's always somebody telling you what to do. If anytime somebody's paying you, there's yeah. someone telling you what to do. Exactly. So <laughs> that's, that's true. But at the same time, I have more mental bandwidth. I'm not, frankly, I'm not feeling like I have to kind of hide the fact that I have this business running. I can think about how to grow the business. I can think about doing this, I'm doing that. There's more mental bandwidth. So right. I would say anybody's thinking about it, just do whatever people are willing to pay you money for right now, do that for two, three people, and then just get out as soon as possible. Don't worry about, like, I'll say this, when I started my company, I, I'll be frank, I was, I, I didn't have any savings. I had like two months of runway and we just made it work. Um, we just right. made it work. So just kind of believe in yourself and go for it. That's the biggest thing. Well, if you push hard enough and you have a, and it, when did you, when did you realize this is something that people wanted? Is it because it, the, of your experience at Zoom Info? Is it like, there's obviously a demand for this? Yeah, so, I mean, people always need sales, right? People always need oh, yeah. um, people. Always Anything need in that space is always there's always a demand for it. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, that, that's that's thing. And then people were paying me. I was like, okay, one person will pay me, <laughs> ten people will pay me, and then ten people will pay me, hundred people will pay me. So that's that's how I see it. You just want to you just want to work hundred hour, hours a week, though. That's the thing, and that's where the scalability comes in. Yeah, and scalability you can figure out. Like I think I think um, biggest thing I always talk to people that oh that doesn't sound scalable. Like they've never run a business before, like you have, right? So it's like, well, you can. Hire, it's all, it comes down to like hiring people. You'll figure a way to scale it if you're truly dedicated enough. So I wouldn't yep. worry about that if you haven't done this before, you know? So, yeah. 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 No, that's absolutely right. So yeah. how are you seeing AI? So AI is helping you to craft the emails. Are, are, you, are you using it for anything else? Yeah. So I would say biggest thing is um, I don't want to get too geeky here, but when we set up a new client, we have to buy those burner domains we're sending emails from. Usually buy about a hundred. Um, before I had to sit there and write out the names, come up with the names. We just use AI to generate the names and then we're good to go from there. Um, anything else you use it for? I use it for like analyzing sales calls, just like, hey, what, you know, what's the sentiment here based on the transcript, that kind of stuff. So oh cool. So you actually has you have it go in and and look at the responses and and give you some clues as to which way it goes. So is it yeah, without like having what, to know? What what might he be interested in that kind of stuff? Like what might he be? What might be a pain point? Maybe I missed something, etc. Just mostly for summarization. But you know, in summarization, sometimes I miss things. So, do you ever do any of the stuff where it goes like act like a marketing manager from X Y Z company? D does that it? Any of that kind of prompting work? I don't do that. But then one of the tools I use is, is called Clay. Right? I think I mentioned this earlier. Um, they have those sort of promptings in there. So in that case, I I guess I do use it, but I don't do it myself when I'm using GPT. So. So the clay, what's clay? So it's, it's sort a, of like is, a fancy air table. Okay. So, so it's like air out. table, but there's some AI built into it as well. Yeah. They've got all the integrations built out. They have a bunch of like random tools just built in. It's mostly for sales prospecting. And um, yeah, they have some preset prompts that we use sometimes. And we just take the preset prompts and tweak it around. Nice. Yeah. So you said that, uh, that uh, the landscape has changed just in the last two years, right? Yeah. So like, what, what, what could you do now? What, what could you do then that you couldn't do now? Yeah. So what we could do now, obviously AI, um, people, you know, there's tools like clay, there's all these different tools popping up, making it easier to scrape data. Like right. if I'm sending an email, maybe I want to see that using Salesforce or something much easier to find data like that now. Um, also more education on the subject, right? People are kind of figuring out, okay, this is kind of what works. There's more people talking about how to run successful email campaigns, et cetera. There's more of a defined playbook. Um, things have changed for the negative spam filters are getting stricter. 
it's mm-hmm. even us like we have our, we have a contingency contingency strategy like if our inbox go down we have backups etc but it's just gotten much harder like people report you spam your whole domain is toast like before you might be able to get some spam reports reset your inbox and you're good to go now it's like you're toast right so there's that um also other people this kind of ties back to another point we we're talking about other people are using AI. There's some tools like the way we use AI is we use, we write our own prompts. We do all this ourselves, et cetera. There's a lot of like prepackaged tools that write the personalized lines for you. So people are kind of catching on to like cheesy AI personalization. Like for you, it might be, <laughs> Hey, I saw you went to Stanford or whatever and you studied um, X, Y, Z. Like yeah. you probably see right through that. Right. So yeah. Yeah. Stuff like or that. using, using specific words like AIEs, right? Like delve and dive and all of those specific yeah, specific words that are like definitely AI ish. So, yeah, exactly. so people people are seeing that spam filters are seeing that. So, mm-hmm. where do you see things? So, if two years ago it was it was hard and now it's getting tougher, do you, th- yeah. you do you see that it's going to get like even worse? And do you have any plans to mitigate that? I think it's going to get worse. <laughs> I'm just being frank. So, <laughs> I, I think, but here's here's my thought. Right, is I think there will always be a way to email as long as email is a valid communication channel because we're it's not just marketing, right? Like I do marketing right. through email, but we use email to talk to other companies, talk to other people, whatever. So as long as email is a valid channel, there's no way Google or Outlook or whatever can be so strict to where they just ban all the emails. There has to be some level of leeway. So oh, yeah. really it's just testing a lot of stuff. We spend a lot of time breaking domains on the side, just like, you know, breaking domains, see how many emails we can send, how many inboxes do we need. We do a lot of testing in that regard just to kind of make sure, you know, just to kind of see what works, what doesn't, when, when do things start breaking, et cetera. And that's been worked out. That's worked out pretty well for us. Like, we first started the company, we had a couple like domain, like deliverability crises. And then we just kind of figured out like always comes back to just buy more inboxes, really like set up more right. domains, set up more senders. That's, that's pretty much it. Like, so it's I don't quantity, it's quantity, 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 right? Quantity it's and like, then just yeah. spreading the risk, spreading the risk. That's the biggest right. thing. Right. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. So, so it's time to think like a futurist. It's 10 years from now. Where will we be in 20, where will you be in 2034? Are you still, do you think email is going to get so saturated that you're going to have to spin to something else? Or are you planning cold email hackers to go, to go the long game or where, where you see the long game? I definitely do think it's a long game, right? Cause I think about all the six, I work, I work with some pretty successful founders and all of them have been doing their business for like 15, 20, 30 years, whatever. Right. So it's right. just, it's, it's definitely a long game. Um, I don't think email is going anywhere. I think it's gonna be harder. Who knows where spam filters will be. And I do think in 10 years, um, frankly, the AI can probably write the email from scratch at the same level. I can write it now, if not right. better. just 10 years, so, that's a long time. Well, if that's the case, then, uh, what do they need? What do they need you for? Or are you going to build the SAS that does it? Probably build a SAS that does it run ads, something else. I don't know. We'll figure it out as we go. Like, that's kind of how I run these. I'm like, we'll just figure it out. Just don't quit. So I think we're going to get to the point where it's like my AI talking to your AI because it's like the only way to get out of it. Cause like you said, I mean, yeah. email is still absolutely essential. It's not going yeah. away. Right. Going away. Mm-hmm. But the, the sort of the capture and the processing of that email might get so sophisticated right. that none of this stuff will ever get through to yeah. the user at the other end, or it'll get to the AI who can deal with it. And then maybe it'll be, it'll end up being your AI tucked into my AI and the, <laughs> the, the AIs can decide what to let through, what not to let through. Yeah. Who knows? And I figure, yeah, probably by then it would probably have to be sassified. Like it would have to be turned into a SAS by then. Uh, right. 10 years is a long time. I think that's probably the most likely route this thing, this whole thing goes. And then it'll be in a situation where it's actually intelligent enough to just keep sending different kinds of messages until it gets yeah. through. Right. Yeah. Who knows so what like, it's going to look like, like the spam filters. I mean, email is the technology hasn't really changed that much in the past, however long. So yeah, who knows how yeah. much it's going to change. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, the key is just getting in front of a human, right? Exactly. That's the problem mm-hmm. is like, if you can't get in front of a human, then right. you're SOL. And right now these, you have to use all these tactics to get in, to get in front of people. Right. And then I'm, I'm assuming the tax tactics will change. It's they almost like change. being, like you said, it's being it's like being a hacker. You know, every time there's, they try to protect against it. Yeah, you know, you have to try and come up with a way to get around it, and and it's just a, it's just a never ending game. Yeah, that's why I like my company name. Is just, <laughs> that's that's pretty much it. No, you described it perfectly. Um, that's exactly how to phrase it. Like nice. it changes even one year ago is completely different. Like yeah. how we get around spam, how lenient they are, what strategy we use. Like we were using Zoho for a while. Zoho yeah. just completely banned Cody Motors. I don't know how they figured it out. They just completely banned us. Um, and I know some people are still successfully using that, but mm-hmm. just like. We'll see. I'm using Google because it's easier, but Google may do something similar in the future. And then, well, yeah, you never know, right? Anything could happen. 
Exactly. So what kind of companies do you work with? I mean, who's, who's yeah. your typical client? Mostly SaaS companies, seed to series A in the B2B space. We don't do any B2C. Um, there's so much red tape in B2C, so we don't bother right. with that. Right. Um, I would say the only exception when I say B2B SaaS, anything that's extremely like people basically we're selling CISOs, like CISOs, CTOs, whatever they hate mm-hmm. emails. And that's just frankly a really hard niche. <laughs> There's people I work with that specialize in that. For us, it's just we can't be bothered if we're being frank here. So right, right, yeah, very cool, very cool. So if uh, wh- what's your price point? I mean, are you high? Yeah. Are you low? Like, where are you in the in the range of things? We're we're sort of in the medium. So price range okay. anywhere from four to seven thousand dollars a month. Um, we're basically competing with you hiring someone to cold call a day, and right. we're just saying like, look, you can hire someone cold call. You have to go train them, and you know, cold calling is a terrible job. They want to get promoted in six months. So if they do well, they blow out of the water. They want to get promoted in six months and you're back at square one. So yep. we're just saying, we'll do it cheaper because, you know, you factor in benefits, you factor in all this stuff. We're just saying, we'll do it cheaper and we'll do a better job and we're not going to leave in six months. That's our basic um, pitch here. Yeah. Right. And then your your customers that you have now, you've been able to blow it out of the water with them. I mean, they're easily seeing ROI in those kind of, with those kind of numbers. I would say most of them, it always comes back to offer. There's a handful just being as you know, transparent as possible, there's a handful where it's like their offers are, are very niche, right? Like customer support software, there's only so many companies using Zendesk or whatever that need to switch over. So those don't do as well. Right. I would say if we're talking about clients where we just absolutely blow out of the water, it's just any sort of SaaS in sales marketing tech space, you know, FinTech space, HR tech space, those are the ones we do the best for. And, but you're pitching, the, you're pitching sales as well in, the, in those or are you just pitching to FinTechs and... Oh, so um, some some companies sell like sales tech. Like I have a Zoom info. Well, actually, let's not say that here. Um, we have like uh, there's some sales tech customers, and then right. um, and it does very well. Like we can just say, hey, look, like we can help you get more sales. Like who doesn't want to hear that? We have some new right. ways to help you get more sales. So for you to pitch, but when you're pitching for your clients, are the, are the clients also pitching sales too? Or are they pitching their product, whatever whatever they're trying to sell? Yeah, we usually try to um. So if we're talking about messaging, we usually try to. How do you say this? We should try to keep it a little vague. Like we try to say, mm-hmm. oh, we have a way of using AI to help you get more sales or help you save money, help you do this. Like that's obviously not exactly how we say it, but right. um, we just try to explain the the basic premise of like what. Yeah, we're I guess doing. what I'm asking is, are you using your own dog food? Like you're eating your own dog food. You're using your oh, own yeah, yeah. processes. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, sorry, I understood that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's that's, that's how we get most of our customers. Um, we've been getting more inbounds recently through like LinkedIn, podcasts, that kind of stuff. But yeah, we dog food our own product for sure. Nice, nice. Well, this is really cool. I mean, I, I love this. I mean, I mean, hopefully you'll get, pick up some more clients through this because it'd be great. Uh, yeah. So if somebody wants to get in touch with you, what's the best way? Yeah, so you can go to my website. It's coldemailhackers.com. Uh, you can also find me on LinkedIn. My name is Justin and you'll find me as the founder of coldemailhackers.com. Awesome. Well, I'll put all the, all the links in the show notes and people can sure. c- connect with you directly. Thanks so awesome. much. Thanks. Great talking with you. Likewise. All right, bye-bye.